Gas prices have dropped slightly, but the highs they continue to be at, let's be real, we're all looking for ways to save money. So lots of talk about electric cars, but what does that really mean when it comes to the cost and what's the real savings in the end? Nicole Nielsen digs into the numbers for you to give you some clarity. Right now, every penny counts. It's tough for people right now. And filling up the tank, well, let's be honest, it hurts. When it got to $5 a gallon recently nationwide, I think that was a real eye opener for people. So is electric the answer? We've got a couple things to consider here. Up front, the cost of an EV on average is more expensive by about ten to $20,000. Or you could buy a gas car. But have you seen the price of gas? I turn to the experts. Jerry Reynolds is a car consumer advocate with over 35 years of industry knowledge. He says there's a lot to think about before making the switch. Will an electric vehicle work for me in my lifestyle? If the end all be all is to save a dime, well, an electric car, he says, is fantastic. But let's do the math. The average cost for a gallon of regular unleaded gas in Texas is changing every day, but for these purposes, let's say it stays around 460. The average car gets 26 miles per gallon. If you drive 15,000 miles a year, it would cost you $2,654. Now to charge an EV, where it all depends on electricity costs, which is about 12 cents per kilowatt hour in Texas. It would take you about 3,750 kilowatt hours to charge enough for 15,000 miles. All in all, you're looking at $450 a year, a difference of over 2,000 bucks. And on top of that, you're going to save money down the road in a small way on the lack of oil changes, lack of tune-ups. A consumer report study shows the average dollar savings on maintenance over the lifetime of an EV is about $4,600. Some EV models are even eligible for a federal tax incentive of up to $7,500. And while there are ways to cut corners... People are shocked when they check their insurance quotes. The downside is insurance is typically higher on EVs, and you're going to have to shop around. Oh, yeah. Jerry says he's seen some insurance spike by $200 a month. Your driving record also plays a major role here. You'll also probably want to factor in an at-home charging station and fees that come along with installation by an electrician, which could cost about another grand, though those are only one-time costs. But there's more to the decision than just money. How do you know if the lifestyle's for you? Ask yourself, how much range do I need? How much time do I want to spend dedicated to charging my vehicle? And am I willing to spend the time finding a charger when out in public? Jerry says the bottom line is if you can get over the initial lump sum, you would likely save a pretty penny over the years. But if you're interested, test one out first. Go rent one for a weekend and drive it under real world circumstances and see if it's for you before you go spend $65,000 for one. Pretty sage advice. Our Nicole Nielsen reporting, and overall, Jerry Reynolds says the industry is still fairly young. EVs, he thinks, are going to continue to become more and more affordable. They're going to grow in range, which is something a lot of people wonder. He also says it's something that if you want to invest in now, a hybrid might be a great option. Gives you kind of the best of both worlds, and you can kind of feel it out and see where you go from there.